Researchers use sunlight to change carbon dioxide into ethanol. There's way too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, but some wicked science coming out of Cali may change all that. Scientists at the Berkeley Lab in California have developed technology that can convert carbon dioxide into ethanol using sunlight. This process is known as artificial photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, plants use light from the sun to create food and oxygen. Low amounts of solar energy were used in a copper-silver nanocoral cathode to produce ethanol. The researchers said their process used around 2.5 volts, half of what it currently takes to turn CO2 into ethanol. Carbon dioxide largely comes from fossil fuel dino juice, and it's heating up the planet like never before. The state of the climate is dismal. A report from the U.S.'s National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration confirmed that 2016 was a year of extreme heat, surpassing 2015 as the warmest year since records began 137 years ago. A strong El Nino coupled with long-term global warming led to land and sea surface temperatures reaching unprecedented heights in 2016, making it the hottest year on record. The planet's greenhouse gas emissions likewise went up, with carbon dioxide concentrations increasing to more than 400 parts per million for the first time ever. Global sea levels are at their highest, at 3.25 inches more than the 1993 average. The past two decades have seen sea levels go up at an average of 0.13 inches annually, with the Western Pacific and Indian Oceans showing the highest rates of increase. Water and precipitation cycles exhibited extremes, with droughts plaguing parts of Africa and South America. Other areas, meanwhile, were beset by floods and tropical cyclones, which in 2016 numbered 93. The report's findings emphasize that the symptoms of climate change show no sign of slowing and will likely intensify unless major changes are made. But with recent blows to efforts combating climate change, including the Trump administration pulling out of the Paris Agreement, it seems we'll see more record-breaking weather in the years to come. A skyscraper designed to eat carbon dioxide. The construction of a carbon-eating, eco-friendly skyscraper in Taipei is expected to be complete in September of this year. The architect of the residential building says he hopes the structure can help battle air pollution. The Taozu Yinyuan Tower features one central core tower, with two helicoidal towers around it. The design was inspired by the double helix of a DNA strand. Some 23,000 trees and shrubs will fill the tower's facade roof and balconies. This is reportedly just slightly fewer than the number of trees in New York Central Park. The 21-story tower features 40 luxury condos, hallways with glass flooring and a swimming pool. The 1,000-square-meter photovoltaic roof is designed to convert solar energy into electricity for the building. Rainwater will also be collected and recycled in the building. The plants in the tower will absorb 130 tons of carbon dioxide emissions per year, which is the equivalent of about 27 cars. Taiwan reportedly produced more than 250 million tons of carbon dioxide in 2014. Clearly, Taipei City will need more than one carbon-eating building in order to counter the pollution produced. However, whether more will be constructed remains to be seen. Could geoengineering help save the planet? With global warming causing heat waves and rising sea levels, and potentially bringing about more devastating consequences, scientists are turning to climate engineering solutions to keep temperatures down. Geoengineering has two approaches to cool the planet, carbon dioxide removal and solar radiation management. Taking the direct air capture approach is Swiss company Climeworks, which uses several collectors to suck in air that contains carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is filtered and collected, while other air molecules are returned to the atmosphere. A separate Harvard project, meanwhile, is working on dimming sunlight. The team plans to release limestone particles using a high-altitude balloon and then observe its effect on the stratosphere. The limestone spray will supposedly reflect solar radiation and slow greenhouse gas warming. It will also neutralize the acids that destroy the ozone, thus helping to restore that protective layer. Another technique aims to cool the seas and prevent coral bleaching by spraying salt generated from salt water to create more reflective clouds. Critics of geoengineering warn that such solutions are a temporary fix and run the risk of dealing more damage in the long run. 
It's definitely a radical step from reducing carbon emissions, which many believe is the more effective way to curb global warming. A carbon dioxide sucking plant just opened in Zurich. The alarming rise in atmospheric carbon dioxide has led scientists to develop removal technologies to counter climate change. One such company in Switzerland has built a plant that directly removes this carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The Climeworks plant is located on top of a waste recovery facility, which provides it with heat and electricity. Air containing carbon dioxide and other molecules are blown through several carbon dioxide collectors. The plant currently has 18 such collectors, which are large boxes fitted with filters that capture more than 2,400 kilograms of carbon dioxide each day. Carbon dioxide binds to the amines in the filter, while other molecules pass through and return to the atmosphere. Once saturated, the filter is heated to 100 degrees Celsius, causing the carbon dioxide to unbind and be extracted. The filtration system can be reused several thousand times, allowing this process of removal and collection to be a continuous cycle. The carbon dioxide collected by the plant can be stored underground, used to help make renewable fuels and materials, or supplied to the food and beverage industry. Climeworks provides 900 tons of carbon dioxide annually to a nearby greenhouse, which has reportedly increased their crop yield by 20%. Climeworks also hopes to remove 1% of global carbon dioxide emissions by 2025. China is building a city covered in plants. The world's first forest city, designed by Italian architect Stefano Borelli, is currently under construction in southern China and is expected to be completed by the year 2020. The forest city is located in a mountainous region north of the city of Liuzhou in southern China. The city will host 30,000 people and will include offices, houses, hotels, hospitals, and schools. The buildings will draw on geothermal energy to provide cooling and heating systems for interior air conditioning. Solar panels will be installed over the rooftops to harvest solar energy. A total of 40,000 trees and almost 1 million plants representing over 100 species will be planted on building facades, in parks, and on city streets. The trees and plants will absorb an estimated 10,000 tons of carbon dioxide and 57 tons of fine dust pollutants each year. Meanwhile, the greenery will produce 900 tons of oxygen annually. A fast rail line will connect the forest city to Liuzhou, a city with a population of some 3.7 million. Vertical forests have become a recent popular concept in architecture. Nanjing in eastern China is currently building two green towers that can absorb 25 tons of carbon dioxide a year. Taipei City in Taiwan is also building a carbon-eating tower, which reportedly will be able to absorb 130 tons of carbon dioxide emissions a year. There's a lot of gas under the Congo. Scientists have recently discovered the world's largest tropical peatland, which spans between the two Congos. The newly discovered Cuvette Centrale peatland lies in the central Congo Basin, covering 145,500 square kilometers, which is an area larger than England. The peatland locks in 30 billion tons of carbon, which is the equivalent of three years of the world's total fossil fuel emissions. Peat is an organic wetland soil formed by dead plant debris. Peatlands act as carbon sinks by removing carbon from the atmosphere through plant growth. If peatlands dry out, for example through drainage for agriculture, it could trigger further decomposition of the peat, thus releasing carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. Scientists say the Cuvette Centrale peatland must be well protected in order to prevent major damage to the environment.